Hello to everyone out there in video land. This is author, screenwriter, and short filmmaker Dewey B. Reynolds. How's everybody doing today? Uh, today I want to talk about serial killers. And believe me, we've had a lot of serial killers throughout the years. I mean, we've had John Wayne Gacy, Ted Bundy, Jeffrey Dahmer, Richard Ramirez. We've even had Robert Berdella right here in Kansas City. Uh, we've also had women serial killers. We've had the Boston Strangler. Uh, we've had quite a bit throughout the years all across this great nation of ours. And a lot of experts have been on talk shows to talk about serial killers and what makes them tick. When we look at someone like Jeffrey Dahmer who murdered a total of 17 victims uh, Jeffrey Dahmer was disturbed even as a little boy because he loved to kill animals and dismember them uh, his parents knew that he needed help but they did not seek out this help for Dahmer uh, we think of guys like uh, John Wayne Gacy out of Chicago he also had problems coming up as a child uh, he was abused from what I understand. Uh, we think of guys like Ted Bundy. Uh, very, very good looking man. Very educated, very well read, very articulate. The man did not appear as a serial killer. And experts have said that serial killers never come to their victims as mean, obnoxious, and boisterous people. They never come to them like that they actually come to their victims being the nicest people in the world and sometimes you have to be aware of people who are just too nice there is a such thing as being too nice and uh, many people give in to it they buy into it. oh that person is so nice that man is so nice that woman is so nice but people put on false faces they really do and they make you think that they are some of the nicest people in the world when they actually are some of the meanest people in the world. I also think of uh, Dennis Rader out of uh, Wichita who was known as the BTK killer. Bind, Tortured, and Kill. Matter of fact, I read a very good book called The Unholy Messenger. This book right here. And it talked about the life and crimes of the BTK serial killer by Steven Singler and I've read quite a few other books about serial killers and how they operate many of these guys uh, have some type of mental disorder that actually needs medication to keep under control but a lot of these guys never seek out medical help and they get go, they go, off, go off into these uncontrollable rages where they just have a voracious appetite to kill and kill and kill and keep killing over and over again and my story Brush Creek Charlie kind of talks about a man whose uh, appetite to kill is uncontrollable like the rage is like oh god it's like a, the, fl the flames are constantly being fanned and the heat just intensifies and so many people are hard to tell a serial killer because a lot of them don't even fit the profile they seem like they're so nice and innocent they wouldn't harm a flea but like it's been said those are the ones that you have to really look out for and I know throughout my life I've been very cautious because I was raised in the streets I've always been street smart as well as book smart and I know that sometimes when people put on these airs about how nice they really are <coughs> excuse me and about how they come to people and make them think that oh you can trust me oh I wouldn't hurt you oh please can I help you with your groceries uh something wrong with your car uh do you need a ride somewhere that same person offer you a ride they take you somewhere and they might kill you and they might dismember your body and put it in trash bags and throw it in the river, throw it in the creek, or throw it in the woods. We don't know that. You have to be exceptionally careful. There's an old saying that the old timers used to say, you can never be too careful. 
And it is so true. You can never be too careful. So there's been so many serial killers throughout the years uh, that there's like a long laundry list of them. I mean, going all the way back to God knows when, the 1800s, the 1900s, the 20th century, the 21st century, you name it. And sometimes we don't know about these people until they get caught. Because unless they get caught, they're going to keep killing you. I remember right here in my hometown of Kansas City, there was a serial killer who was picking up prostitutes. And this raged killer, this psychopath, was dismembering their limbs from their body. They're amputating their arms and legs and throwing their torsos over here and legs over here and etc. And this guy had killed like maybe 11 women before he was caught. Then we had the Gillum Park killer here in Kansas City who was killing a lot of women who were crack addicted and were into prostitution. So right here in my hometown of Kansas City, we've had more than our share of serial killers. So, yeah, I would say that uh, most U.S. cities have had their share. I mean, you, you look at Cleveland, Chicago, New York, <laughs> L.A. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, this is my dog, Charlie. And uh, Charlie wants to be in the video. So say, say hi, Charlie. Say hi to everybody. And uh, so... We really know when we never really know when these people are going to strike, when and where they're going to strike, because they operate systematically. So you really, really, truly have to be careful, because there's always someone lurking within the shadows to bring harm to the unwary. So you have to really be on your best guard. So always be on your best guard and beware of those potential serial killers who pose as very nice people. Me and Charlie are signing out and uh, this is my baby right here. She's a full pedigree boxer. This is my sweetie pie. Say bye Charlie. Look Charlie. Look. Look girl. Look Charlie. <laughs>